dynamic umpire out of Willie. His calls were never that colorful back in Ohio. <laughs> hey, about that last call, Mr. Gillis. Mm -hmm. From where we sat, it looked like he was safe by a mile. Well, I'll tell you, lady, I calls him the way I sees him. Not everybody sees him the way you calls him. <laughs> hey, I gotta put my gear away. I'll catch up with you in the parking lot, okay? Yeah. I still say that little boy was safe. <laughs> you do? Well, not really. But he was so sweet looking, I wouldn't have had the heart to call him out. Well, I guess being a cop's made Willie hard hearted. Oh. Really? Well, that's one of the qualities you need to be a dynamic umpire. <laughs> Thank you. Willie, you must love working with these young folks that tolerate being fussed at so much. Well, it's just part of the police program for community relations. Who are you fooling? <laughs> as much as you love children, you'd be here anyway. Is there anything else, Mrs. Gibson? Well, um, you could put a couple of cases of soda in the cooler. Okay. Back yourself in that corner, honey, and keep your mouth shut. You. Spread eagle on the floor, face down. You know, just a minute. Ooh, ooh. Stay down, um. Is this all you got, honey? bad it is yet. Can you talk? Yeah, I can talk. The woman is hysterical. I need to know how many there were and how they were dressed. Um, two men. One big, the other five nine. A little guy shot me. Looked like a 32 caliber automatic. What about hair, eye color? Masks. Both of them masks. Willie. Willie. Be okay, Nance. Be all right. Come on, Nancy. They have to get him to the hospital. Come on. Move back, please. Mr. Gillis? Mr. Gillis? Who are we going to get to our party tomorrow, Mr. Gillis? Terry! Hi, Terry! Hey, I can hear you, man. What is it? My legs. The kid... He had his hand on my leg. I didn't feel anything. Nothing. All right, over here, 
center it on me. Let's move it, please. I take Nancy to the hospital, okay? Okay, we'll check with you there. Yeah. Two male Caucasians, one over six feet tall, the other short and slight. The tall one was wearing a windbreaker, the short one a sport jacket. Witnesses say they were driving a 1965 light tan four-door Dodge sedan, and they think the last three numbers were 974, though that's not definite. Uh, one other thing, whoever these guys are, they shot an unarmed man in the back. So bear that in mind, don't take any chances, okay? Get going. Uh, Webster, Danko. You want to go down to the hospital and see how things develop? I'll find another unit to fill in for you. Yes, as far as I'm concerned. Sir, I think we'll be a lot more use on the street than in a waiting room. Maybe. Just make sure you're not so anxious to get these two goons that you don't foul up. I'll go by whatever you say, but be sure how much you want to be a cop and how much you want to be Willie's friend. We'll be all right. Okay, take off. I'll keep you posted on the radio. Okay. You're a policeman, aren't you? Huh? Yes, I am. Something I can do for you, young man? Well, I was wondering. Wondering what? Mr. Gill is going to be okay? Well, we hope so. He's young and he's strong. Young? He's 22. Well, strong then. I think we can agree on that, eh? Something else you're wondering about? How come people hurt people? Well, sir, I don't believe there's a policeman in the history of the world who hasn't wondered about that very same thing. I'm afraid none of us has come up with a very good answer. Registered to Gus T. Caldwell, 1483 Bay Street. That'd be that one there. But it's still warm, but that could be from the sun. I'll call it in, see if there's anything hot in Caldwell. Hold it, man. You won't have to. Look in here. There's the cash box from the stand. 1483? Let's go. Two oh five. Ah, you Gus Caldwell? Police! Halt! Okay, hold it right there. 
Put your hands behind your back. Lock your fingers. All right. Spread your legs. Further. You guys get pretty gung-ho over something like this. What, do you got a quarter to fill or something? Look, man, you got the right to remain silent. Use it. What right? Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have the right to an attorney? Yeah, with the shyster lawyer I got. Listen, mister, will you shut up? I'm trying to read you your rights. Now, if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Do you understand what I just told you? Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, move it. That way. I think you guys would have something more important to do than roust the guy over some alimony payments. Yeah, take a good look, people. Don't you pay your taxes for? I'm a big, bad criminal. Miss some alimony payments to that bloodsucker I was married to. These goats treat me like I was Jack the Ripper. Look, man, before you say another word, you better know that we're taking you in for suspicion of robbery and assault with a deadly weapon, and it might get to attempted murder. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was upstairs since 8 o'clock last night. Yeah, what about your car? My car? My car's out front. And what's that over there? It's my car. You mind if I have a look at it? No, no, go ahead. Look, you can ask my girl. I was upstairs all last night. We'll check it. It's true. Absolute gospel. We was up all night. He was watching a telephone. I forget the disease, but it was really neat. Hey, Terry. Guy's been hot wired. We're gonna have to let him go. You mean somebody stole my car and used it for a robbery, and then brought it back here? That's right, sir. I ought to sue you guys for false arrest. That's what I ought to do. Mr. Caldwell, we might have started to arrest you for the wrong thing. But unless you give me your word, you'll be at the precinct to arrange for your alimony tomorrow. I'll slap these things right back on you and read your rights all over again. Now, which way do you want it? Your call. I'll be there in the morning. Be looking forward to seeing you, Mr. Caldwell. And remember, don't touch anything in your car until our lab gets to it. Yeah, we'll stay with the car till the lab takes over. Ludlow 7 out. Well, at least it wasn't a total waste. We got the car. Yeah, but it wasn't a car that shot Willie. Now, bud, here's an easy one. Who starred in The Beast with Five Fingers? Shut up, best I'm listening to the radio. Top 40. I'll give you a hint. It was either Bella Lugosi or Peter Laurie. How in the world can you keep reading about them weird hog creeps all the time? Hmm? It was Peter Laurie. That little guy was scary. Shut up, Vesta. Now, this one's real hard, man. Vesta. That was a cop you shot. That's not funny. And I ain't joking. You shot an off duty cop. Stupid. I don't see how he is. I'm gonna call and see. And it wasn't me shot that off duty cop. It was us, bud. You and me. Us. No, don't do that. Hey, Willie, look, it's me. I've got to give you a shot. I don't, I don't want to sleep, OK? No, no, Willie, if I don't give you this the pain, it'll be pretty hard to take. Hey, listen to me. Joe, I'd rather f feel the pain than feel nothing. Willie, please. Listen to me. I, I'm punchy, but. I'm, what's the word? Lucid. I'm lucid. I'm telling you, no shot. You can't give me a shot when I say no. You got that? Okay, I got that. Okay. Where's Nance? She's waiting. She's gonna stay with us until you get better. What about, 
personal effects. What do you mean? Where are they? My wallet, my stuff in the pockets. It's okay. It's at the nurse's station. Don't let Nance find the receipt. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take care of it. Okay. All right. Chill. I'd rather feel the pain than feel nothing. Mr. Gillis asked me to pick up something from his personal effects for him, please. Oh, yes, they should be right over here. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, babe. Hi, Joe. Okay. How you doing? Okay. How is he? Well, there's not much change. It's really too soon to tell until his condition stabilizes a little more. Did Nancy go home? No, no, she's uh, just talking to Dr. Ridgeway. Here it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's that? That's Willie's personal effects. There's some receipt he didn't want Nancy to know about. It's a receipt he put down for a deposit on an engagement ring. Mrs. Thompson, please report to front desk. Have you ever worked on cases like this? Yeah. If the spinal cord is severed, then what? Well, if that happens, Nancy, then Willie's paralyzed from the waist down. Forever? Uh-huh. Mike, do you have anything I could have for a drink? I could use one. Sure do. Name it. I don't know what to name. I don't really drink. How about a brandy? Thanks. The whole four years at school, there wasn't any doubt in anyone's mind that Willie and I were going to get married. He was going into business, and I was going to teach art. Just as square and dull as you could imagine. And then this man from the police department came onto campus, talking about the program being started. Made it sound like being a cop was a combination of Sir Galahad and Captain's Courageous. And Willie bought it all. I wonder how he feels about it now. I know how I feel about it. Mike? Yeah? When you get the people that did this, make sure you do get them. Make sure they pay. Come in. We were wondering about progress in Willie's case, sir. Haven't heard anything new from the boys upstairs yet. How's Gillis doing? Well, he's a little better. He, they've cut the sedation. So far, we don't have much to go on. No fingerprints of any value. The empty shell casings just confirm the caliber of the gun. 
From the car ashtray, we get cigar ashes and these. Seems to be some kind of a design on them. Though Caldwell, the owner of the car, doesn't smoke. Some burnt matches. Doesn't seem like much headway, Lieutenant. Look, in all fairness, they're working on a number of cases upstairs. Now, let me assure you, in this instance, every move has been made. Well, you always said at the academy that tenacity is an important weapon to any police officer, that sometimes an item or a piece of information must be checked and checked again. I said that? Yes, sir, you did. Well, then stop quoting me and go do something about it. Yes, sir. Look at him. He's gonna marry that stupid thing pretty soon. Shut up, Anna. Old Vestas just doing his thing, like the kids say. Yeah. Well, he's liable to get into trouble with that thing if he's not careful. I can handle it. That ain't what she said. She said you're liable to get into trouble. That's pretty hard to argue with, ain't it, Vesta? <laughs> oh, what is your butt? You just insulted old Vesta's girlfriend there. <laughs> well, it's got to be the cleanest ballpark I've ever seen. They must have swept it. Swept it and dumped it here. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, man, what a stuff kids put in their stomachs. It's a wonder they make it to first base. Hey, look at this. Film fair bookstore. And he weighs about 210 pounds. The other one is slight, about 5'9", and he weighs about 120 pounds. Well, who knows? People are coming in and out of here all day picking up things. Well, listen, miss, this is very important to us. Anything you might be able to remember would be very helpful. Look, boys, if I could remember any big guys with little guys or, or little guys with big guys, well, I'd be just thrilled to tell you. I really would. But half the time, I don't even remember what day it is. Uh, the hold-up men wore masks similar to these. Now, it's possible they were bought here. Now, think. Do you recall anyone fitting the description, buying masks like these in the last few days or week, maybe? I'd go out of my mind if I try to remember everybody who buys this junk. Like I said before. Half the time, I don't even remember my own... Yeah. Well, thanks for your help. What help? Good question. Well, first time I'd I see you in three days must be quite a thrill for you. Yeah, sure is. I think I'll buy a bunch of postcards up in X-ray. Send them all to my friends. Maybe you guys might like to ride up on your own. We'll see you upstairs. Okay. And thank you. Yeah. Penny. But make it a quick penny. We don't have much time. Nance, I was just wondering what's going to happen to us. Well, we can always go back to the plans we had in college. What about children? They're always a part of those plans. I love you, Willie. I know it will be difficult for us, but we can do it. We'll adjust. An answer. Wouldn't be so difficult if, if only one of us had to adjust. What does that mean? It means that. It means that you were engaged to a man. No, I don't, I don't quite meet that specification. 
Nance, I am not going to tie you to a wheelchair. You're off the hook. Willie. Departmental regulations call for three exercise periods for each man each week. Well, you better be careful you don't strain anything now, you hear? Thank you, Officer Danko. I will be careful. Have you turned anything up about Willie? Well, we found a place where we think they bought the masks, and we put it on the hot sheet for special surveillance. Good. You can't do any better than that. How's Gillis holding up, by the way? Still doing a slew of tests, but they've taken the stitches out of his arm. His arm? What's the matter with his arm? Well, when the big guy hit him, Willie tried to block the punch, and uh, the guy's watch band cut his left forearm. He had to have ten stitches in it. I'll spring for some coffee. You want some? Yeah, sure do. No coffee. You two guys get upstairs to R&I. And I do what? Run a make on a John Doe with the following qualifications. Caucasian, over six feet tall, record of burglary and aggravated assault, and some kind of a history of boxing, amateur or professional. Well, there's going to be a lot of guys fit that description. And concentrate on looking for a southpaw. Because it looks like whoever hit Willie just might have led with his right. Baby, his name is Bud Reeves. There's a definite return of nerve pathways. How much damage is done, it's difficult to say. But we do know that the cord isn't totally severed. Doctor, does that mean I'm going to be OK? Well, as long as we leave that bullet where it is, your condition isn't going to change very much one way or the other. Then what about removing it? Well, that's possible, Mr. Gillis, but... You just said it, Doc. It's possible, so let's do it. Mr. Gillis, the odds in this case... Are... Look, I don't care what the odds are. I want you to remove that bullet. Willie, stop it. I care what the odds are because I care about you. And will you let the doctor explain them, please? Okay, Nance. It's the positioning of the bullet, Mr. Gillis. That bullet is lodged between the vertebrae in such a way that forces us to deviate from what we would normally choose as ideal surgical procedure. What does all that mean? It means it will have to go in from the abdomen, not from the back. It means it will be operating in close proximity to the abdominal aorta. It's an extremely delicate procedure. If something were to go wrong, if there were any hemorrhaging, it would almost surely prove fatal. And getting that bullet out of there is still no guarantee that the paralysis would end. No. Doc. I had a, a bet on a football game with a guy a few years ago. There were two seconds to go in the game, and uh, my team was behind. They kicked a field goal and won. The thing is that the field goal was 63 yards, and the guy who kicked it only had half a foot to kick it with. Now, the, the odds on that must have been one in a million. But I won that bet. Nance, I'm going to win this one, too. So let's do it. <laughs> that smoke is irritating my sinuses. Why don't you shut your sinuses? 
Don't you get wise with me, Scarface. Bud, you'd better shut her up. All right, you two. Come on, be cool. We we're having a party. I don't feel like having a party. Why can't we go to the classic studio and look at all the groovy stuff they've got there? I don't have to go anywhere to look at groovy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, come on. Let's go see what they're gonna auction off. Or well, we can go to the bookstore. What you say? I say, why don't you have another cold bee and look at your pictures? Whatever turns you on, mister. <laughs> That's not funny! Then how come I'm laughing? <laughs> every horror film ever made and who the actors were. Uh, could you give us a description of him? Well, he looks kind of like a guy who just ate a puppy. I wish he'd stay out of here. He's trouble. Oh, uh, what kind of trouble? Well, the store just bought a set of old-time horror prints from Classic Studios. On Grand Avenue? Yeah, they have an auction every Thursday. Well, anyway, this creep without permission, rummages through them with his greasy hands, and he ruined their value. Do you still have the pictures? Mm hmm They're right here. Hi. Do you mind if we talk to you? Yeah, I mind. You all right? He's weird. Come on. Let's cut across the line. emergency door. Hey, you guys gonna give me a hand or not? Come on, huh? What do you say? Give it a push. Dr. Litchfield, call your office. How long will he be in there? Oh, I don't know, that kind of operation, it can take quite a while. We can wait in the cafeteria. That's a lot of your life, isn't it? Waiting. No, when you're a nurse, you really don't have too much time to wait around. I didn't mean being a nurse. I meant being a cop's wife. Mrs. Thompson, please report to front desk. Attention. Attention. Visiting hours will be over in 15 minutes, please. The problem, gentlemen, is one of defining terms. See that man walking by? Notice he's wearing a plain, ordinary, everyday suit of clothes. We call him a plain clothesman because he wears plain clothes when on duty. We call you two gentlemen uniformed officers because you wear uniforms when on duty. Am I going too fast for you to grasp any of this? Look, Lieutenant, if his fingerprints are... If I had 98 more legs, I'd be the Rockettes. Come in here. This is precisely what I warned you about. I told you you had to be cops first and Willie's friend second. You got to reverse. Look, Lieutenant, all we did... All you did was blow a stake out. The detectives were going to run on the bookstore. Now he knows you're looking for him. He's going to avoid that place like the plague. That's all you did. Riker? Riker? 
Right. Thank you. Leighton Prince, show your man's name to be Vesta Benson. The last good address we have on him is four years old. Leaves us nowhere. We're on duty in ten minutes. And in uniform. Uh, wait a minute. For your information, Gillis is out of surgery. They'll call us when they know anything. Thank you. Any minute, or it could be another couple of hours. Did you talk to Dr. Richard? Yeah, yeah, he said it went fine as far as he was concerned, but anything involving the spinal cord, you know, you just can't be sure. How are you guys? No change here either. We know all the things they say we're supposed to know, but still having the faintest idea where those two guys are. And what are you supposed to know? We know who they are, we know what they look like, we know their habits, their M.O., where they hang out. Well, they used to hang out. They won't be going back there anymore. It's true. I wonder where Benson would go if he wanted to buy some more of that stuff. I don't know. Any more stores around here like that? No. There's the auction at that movie studio the girl in the bookstore told us about. Hey, wait a minute, I'm lost. Yes, so are we. We'll see you later. Get right to know about it, will you? Yeah. Are they always like that? How long have you been away? A couple of minutes. Eavesdropping, to be honest. Are they always like that? Well, they're not as involved in most cases as this, I guess, but Mike does tend to bring it home with him. And you like that? It's better than being shut out. It's just that I see Jill and how she handles it all and how she copes with it. I mean, if you marry a doctor, you marry medicine. If you marry a minister, you marry the church and religion. But when you marry a cop, you marry the streets and danger. I can't. This is an awful time to tell you, but I just can't. Nance. 
is gonna be okay. It's better to find out now than a couple of years from now. I'm sorry, Willie. I'm just not strong enough. You're strong enough. You're strong enough to be honest. It's as strong as anyone needs to be. Thank you. Feel your hand on my leg. Oh my God. I can actually feel it, Nance. I can actually feel it. No, don't make movies here no more. Boy, they used to, but TV shows and commercials all they do here now. I wonder if you uh, recall ever having seen any of these two men here. No before. recollecting faces. That's part of my job. Yes, sir. No question about it. Where? Well, like I told you before, they have this auction once a week, and people are allowed to come in beforehand, look things over. That's where I seen them. Well, when was the last time? Well, this little fella here with the scar on his face. It wasn't more than an hour ago. An hour ago? Look, you know if anything from horror films is being sold. Well, I got a list here if you're interested. Sure am. Here we are. Yeah, a lot of this stuff would interest him. It sure would. Thank you very much, sir. Well, sure thing. Us boys in uniform, we got to stick together, you know. Yeah, ain't that the truth? <laughs> All right, now I have six dollars for this spear. Who give me six and a half? Do I hear six and a half? Six and a half. Are you all through? All done. All right, sold to that gentleman, number 20, there in the fourth row. All right, Douglas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a piece de resistance. Take a look at this. Something for my lady. Get, Don, get me that mirror there. I want to show you something. Something that will break her heart. Or you might want to give it to your wife. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this mirror was used in the motion picture Echoing Heartbeats. Perhaps you remember it. And I'll give you a little secret. In this mirror, the ghost appeared to the leading lady. How about that? <laughs> now, that in itself should be worth at least to start it off the bidding at $50. Do I hear $50? $50. Reeves Benson, hold it right there.
stupid, Joe. Why is your crutches and make me leave in a wheelchair? That's a house rule, my friend. You get wheeled in, you get wheeled out. Hey, didn't we take a long turn? Nope. You have to sign out for your stuff. Check it carefully. I've seen a lot of suspicious types around here lately. Yeah, well, what can you expect when you're dealing with a... Hey, wait a minute. There is something that... It's okay, really. I got it. Hey, let's get going, huh? Yeah. Charge! Is this the fifth floor? Fourth. Uh, fourth. My mistake. <laughs> okay, let's get inside. We missed you. 